evening, this is Bell Gilles, and we are back with some more X-Plane 11 in virtual reality. Howdy, folks, and we are back here in X-Plane 11, and tonight we are still in the Balearic Islands. This time we are at uh, San Luis, and we are going to be showing tonight the new and improved Huey. Now, what do I mean by that? So, no doubt you may have caught some of my earlier videos on the Nimbus Simulations Huey, and up until now, they only had the classic military version that we're used to seeing from old Vietnam movies, and of course from, you know, current use with uh, the various air forces and armies around the world. Well, I am pleased to say that Nimbus has gone back and made some significant improvements to give us the civilian model. So there is a lot of fun stuff that you can do with this civilian model. Now, externally, it pretty much looks like a Huey. It's got the same trademark shape that we're used to with the Huey, except, of course, if you look at the tail right there, you'll see there's a modernized extended tail. The original Huey, it just kind of stopped at the bottom there. But yeah, that's one of the little changes that they've added to this thing. Now, we're going to be showing off some of the features tonight. It's not going to be an exhaustive list. Otherwise, this video is going to get really long. And you know me, I'm known for my one-hour videos. I'd rather it not be a two-hour video. So I'm only going to show you a handful of some of the changes that have been made to the Huey for this civilian version. As always, the link will be in the video description below if this is something that you want to pick up. All right, so a good place to start would be to show you the new configuration menu. So to access it, and by the way, if you're not in VR, this is the same menu that's at the top of your X-Plane window. So we're going to go to Plugins, and we're going to go to Nimbus Civilian UH-1, and we'll go over here, and now we've got several different choices. Now, a lot of these are the same things that you're used to in the Huey. For example, doors and accessories, weight and balance, co-pilot, controls, position, maintenance, and checklist. The mini menu is also just like the small icons of all of the things that I just read to you, which is duplicated on your pedestal inside the Huey. However, the new one is configuration. That's what we're going to open up right now. Okay, so you see we got a nifty little configuration window, and if I push the trigger right there, it'll kind of stay in place. So as you can see, we've got a number of different things that are currently available to us, and I'm going to show them all to you step by step. So we'll start with a bubble window. If we check on bubble window, you can't really see it on this side. I really should have been on the other side of the helicopter, so we'll go over there real quick. And I seem to have lost my board. Oh, you know what? It's back over that way. That's all right. We'll check it out in a second. But here's the bubble window here that appears on the co-pilot side. So if you happen to be sitting in the Huey in VR in co-pilot side, you can do one of these numbers and lean your head out the window and see what's going on with the world around you. So that's a unique little feature. And of course, it shows up in a profile as well. If we go to the front, you can see it is definitely a bubble. And it is a pretty sizable looking bubble, too. But there's only one on the co-pilot side. There is none on the pilot side, unfortunately. But, you know, we can live with that. All right. Now, I seem to have lost my little uh, thing there. So I'm going to put myself over here, and we can just open it back up through the menu. Configuration. There we go. Oh, uh, now it's disappeared, so I need to pull it up again. See? This is what happens when you try to record stuff live. All right, there we go. So we've got it again. Okay, so the second thing on the list is the steps, which are uh, pretty self-explanatory. That's that little horizontal bar that you see above the skids. It is important to note with the civilian Huey, you get four different types of Huey models. So this particular one that we're using has a medium-high skid. There's, always a, there's also a low skid, a high skid, 
and floats. And let me tell you, the floats on this thing are freaking massive. We won't be showing that one off today, but honestly, that one's my favorite. All right, so we can take the steps off if we want. So there you go. It's one of those enter at your own risk kind of things. Since we like to be safe here on this channel, we'll put the steps in. And I say that loosely because, well, you know me and my shenanigans. All right, so we also have crop dusting, which if we click on that, you will see we've got this big, huge metal pole that stretches from one side of the helicopter to the other and will allow us to drop pesticides and so on on the plants. We're going to be using that first so I can just show you how that works as far as um, the mist and so on that comes out. So we're probably going to put that back on, but I want to go through everything else here. Now, one of the most important things that this helicopter will bring for you is the firefighting capability, and there's two ways to do it. There's the Bambi bucket, which you can load through the aircraft selection menu, and basically what it is, it's a sling loadable item that you can fill up with water to help you fight fire. We're going to be looking later tonight at uh, the whole firefighting plug-in that this thing comes in. However, the other method is the firefighter. So with the firefighter here, you will notice that we have a tank underneath the helicopter, and there's also a hose that comes out, an orange hose. You can't see it right now because I've got the sim paused, but trust me, it's there if the sim is unpaused. And what that'll allow you to do is that'll allow you to hover really low over water, turn on the water pump, suck up the water into that little tank there, and it does get heavy when it's full. And then, of course, you can carry it over to the fire, and dump the water out on top of the fire to out it. We're going to be looking at that later tonight, but we'll turn that off for right now. And the next thing that I want to show you is the medical. So when we click on that, all of a sudden we've got a whole suite of stuff that we can look at. I'm going to close this out to make it easier to pull it back up here. So we're going to go to the inside of the helicopter here. Okay. And inside the helicopter, now we can see that we've got pretty much a full paramedic station here. So this thing has now become a flying ambulance or life flight, if you're used to seeing life flight in your neck of the woods. Now, additionally, what we can do is we can put a patient in there. So let me once again open this up. I think there may be a key bind for this, but I just don't have it bound. That's why we're using the uh, old fashioned menu here. All right. but. Under medical, you got patient. We can click on patient, and sure enough, one of our crew is hurt, so we've got to transport him to the hospital. There's no oxygen mask or anything. None of these come on, but it does look like it is very well modeled, which I got to give them extra props for. It would be nice if these things came on if we had a patient in there, but, you know, I'm not here to criticize. I'm just here to show you this stuff. All right, so that's the medical stuff there. Now, additionally, we can also put in an internal hoist right there, and that has basically the strength to lift up a person. So, like, say, if you're trying to rescue someone from a sinking ship, for example, you would use this hoist, and it swings out, so it opens that little side door there. It'll swing out, and it'll allow you to drop a life preserver or a hook. I guess a life hook is probably what they call it. I don't know the correct terminology. And basically fish them out of the water. Now, additionally, if you don't want the internal hoist, you can do an external hoist. And, of course, we're going to need to go outside for that. So, once again, there we go. All right, so there's our external hoist. This is probably more familiar to you if you're uh, used to seeing like helicopter search and rescue operations. Typically, it's just a fixed hoist that's sitting on the side there. Now, it is important to note that a lot of these modes that I'm showing you are mutually exclusive. So if you have, say, the external hoist on, you can't have the internal hoist on. If you have the medical bay on, you can't have any of the hoists on because, you know, it takes up a certain space that would be used otherwise. So just keep that in mind there. And once again, we'll open this back up. All right, there we go. So we get rid of our external hoist. The radios, uh, we'll look at that once we get into the cockpit. But the basket is the other thing that I want to show you in the outside view. So if we click on that, you can see we've got a little litter there. So let's... Think of it like mash, 
If you remember the old uh, Bell 47, you can load someone up in the side or you could probably load uh, various items or whatnot in the side and carry them around like that. It is also important to note that the weight of this basket will affect your maneuvering capabilities in the Huey. You will kind of lean a little to the right. So keep that in mind if you have this thing on. There is no basket on the other side. It's only on this side. And then last, but most certainly not least, uh, let me attach this here. And we're going to move this right there. Okay, the last thing I want to show you are the front seats. So if we click on that, you will see that we do have two extra seats in the front. Now, if we want to, just with the other Huey, we could add people to any of these seats. But it's important to note that in VR, the only seats that you can sit in physically are this seat on this side, the opposite seat on the other side, the central seat here, the pilot seat, and of course, the co-pilot seat. So keep that in mind if you are the kind of person who does like multiplayer type stuff. That will come in handy as far as how many people you can carry around with you. Okay, so for our first demonstration, we're going to load up the crop dusting uh, mod right there. And I think that's pretty much everything that we need to have. So we're going to show the crop dusting really quickly because that shouldn't take us very long. Obviously, I will need to start the Huey, so that's going to take me a bit. I am not going to show you the full startup sequence this time around. I already have a video up on that. You can refer to that. It really has not changed since then. Okay, so we'll be right back in the cockpit with the Huey ready to go, and we'll go dust some crops. Okay, so we've got the Huey up and ready to go. Let me just make a quick look at everything. Make sure we're ready to take off. Okay, and you can see we've got the classic radios in there. On the little configuration, you can change that to uh, more modern radios and it'll swap it out for like a Bendix King set. I kind of like the classic look though, so I think I'm gonna keep it. It's also important to note that you get multiple liveries with this, and depending on which livery you choose will also determine what color your dashboard and your pedestal are going to be. In this particular one, of course, it's black, which I happen to like the best, uh, but there's also like that grayish, bluish color that uh, you see often in Hueys in some of the other liveries, so keep that in mind as well. All right, uh, let's just check our configuration, and we'll make sure everything is fine. Yeah, we pretty much have everything set for crop dusting, so that's what we're going to do first. Now, I also want to call your attention to this nifty little thing, Nimbus Firefighting. This is a plug-in module that comes with this helicopter. You do not install it in the actual aircraft folder. You install it in your X-Plane resources slash plugins folder, but it only works with this helicopter. Now eventually Nimbus has said that they would like to make it like a full-fledged system that'll work with multiple types of helicopters, but for right now it only works with the Huey. And when we show off firefighting a little bit later in the video, I will show you how to use this thing more fully. So keep that in the back of your mind for right now. Also of note, uh, you'll notice where it says cable max length. That will come in handy if we decide that we're going to pick someone up. We're not going to do that with this version, however, so we're just going to take off and see if we can find some farmlands to spray. And check my altimeter, 29.94, okay, looking good. This is a Huey, so remember, in order to take off, you do want to give it a little bit of pedal, and you want to hold back slightly on the cyclic. There we go. And a little bit to the left. There we go. Kind of sketchy on my takeoff, but I do have a breeze blowing here, and it is a pretty significant wind. So that may or may not come back to haunt us later on down the road. So we're on the island of Menorca, and as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, this is part of the Orbix Balearic Islands. Now, I have not shown this one yet in the series. My original plan, I was going to do a different video that would allow us to fly from Mallorca to Menorca. But 
since uh, the Huey changes came out today, we pretty much wanted to go here and uh, use this area for our Huey demonstration because honestly, it's a little smaller of an island, so it may just work for our purposes here. All right, let me trim us a little bit here. We do have force trim capability with this Huey, as is to be expected if you are familiar with the Huey. Honestly, nothing's really changed as far as the flight model goes, but to me it feels kind of different. Maybe it's because it's a civilian version, and I think I'm actually going a little too fast here. Oh, I sure am. 110 knots. Yeah, let's lower the collective a little bit, shall we? Alright, now we need to find us some farmlands close by that we can start dropping pesticides on. Not that I really condone the use of pesticides, but for the purposes of demonstration, at least this will kind of give you an idea. Now, I will probably also be using the little picture-in-picture -picture thing that you are used to seeing by now on the last couple of videos. And that will kind of help us uh, as far as showing you what it really looks like. All right, I see what appears to be some farmlands over there. So we're going to see if we can slow down a bit. And we'll bring the Huey down and we'll see if we can basically just dust these guys' crops over by this uh, set of greenhouses here. Actually, that looks more like farmland right there. So pull it up. As always, in any helicopter, make sure you are watching your vertical speed indicator because things can get way out of hand if you allow it to. Now, I believe if you're crop dusting, you really got to get down to the ground. So we're actually going to take a little time here and bring ourselves down to the deck. So we're coming down at a rate of about 500 feet per minute. And I'm also trimming our nose up slightly to help us with losing some of that forward airspeed. And we'll just choose one of these fields here and we'll do like our good buddy Randy Quaid did in Independence Day when he propped us the Duran farm. All right, so I like this field here with the little stripes on it. So with everything that I'm going to show you, uh, there are key binds, there are buttons that you can use on like a HOTAS system or if you happen to have like a collective and cyclic and I would highly recommend that you look up those key binds and set them up as it'll make your life a ton easier. All right, right about here is good. So that little striped field is what we're going for. We're just gonna push forward and I'm actually gonna look out the side window as we do this. Let's see if we can spray this field here. So we'll start like right about here. Push the button, send out the spray. And there we go, I think we got the field. That is pretty neat. That is an excellent use of the particle physics that's available currently in X-Plane. We'll do it again, we'll do it over this field here. We'll try not to get any on their greenhouse. So we're gonna do it at an angle here. Look at that. That is just so cool. That is so cool. Of course, you're using your imagination with this. Uh, it's obviously not going to do anything to the ground or you know anything else around you. But it's just kind of cool that it is a little feature that we can use while we're role-playing being a helicopter pilot. And I say role-playing like that because uh, if you watch the latest three Grumpy Simmers episode, we kind of delve into that in a little bit and I think that's a reminder that we all need whenever we're doing this sort of thing unless you're actually doing it for training purposes we're role-playing basically we're role-playing pilots here all right one more time we will go over that little field that we just did before because I think we missed a spot so let's see right about here should be good and we'll set out yield spray spray there we go. We're flying at an angle because again, that breeze. But there we go, I think we did a pretty good job. Okay, so now that we've accomplished that, let's head back to the airport because in order to show you the uh, firefighting module, 
we're gonna need to do a little bit of setup here. So it'll take us a couple of minutes to get to the airport and we will go to the outside view as we make our way back there. Okay, so we are back at the airport, and if I recall correctly, the wind is blowing uh, towards 060, which I have marked on our little HSI there, our compass. So that is basically just to remind me which direction I need to come in. So we'll go ahead and slow down here. I do like this little airport. This is a default airport, just like all the others that we've seen so far on uh, this Balearic Island scenery package, but I think it's kind of cool. They went the extra mile on this one, and I guess there really isn't much to it to begin with, but it's kind of cool that they added all those little features there. All right, so we're gonna make a pedal turn here. We're gonna come down. Gotta watch our speed. And we'll see if we can put her down right on the H. So we're gonna slow down a bit get below 40 knots. That's when we need to start watching that VVI. We want to come down, but we don't want to come down so fast that we end up in vortex ring state. All right, here we go. Here we go. Looking good so far. And I have to say, part of the reason why I have done a few videos in this area is I'm really impressed with Orbix's Balearic Islands. As much as I enjoyed the Canary Islands, there's just something about these islands that seem more appealing to me. I guess it's the, I guess it's the greenery, the fact that these islands look more green than uh, the other islands that we saw. But all the same though, it's Orbix, so you can expect to lose some FPS, not much, but some FPS loss, especially if you're in VR, I should add. But with that having been said, it is still a pretty decent performing add-on, so I would recommend it. And from my understanding, I believe it can work in concert with the uh, UHD Spain that I've heard about. I do not have UHD Spain, so I cannot confirm 100% that it will. All right, but we are down. I'm thinking for our next foray, what we will do is we will use the firefighter module instead of the Bambi bucket. It's just a little bit easier for me, at least, to use a firefighter module. But then we'll demonstrate uh, some of the sling loading with the hoists and everything after that. Okay, so give me a minute to reconfigure the Huey. And when we come back, I'm gonna first show you how to start fires and then I'll show you how to put them out. All right, well, first and foremost, my apologies to Smokey the Bear for what I am about to do. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at the firefighting module and how it works. Now, it is a separate thing, a separate plugin from what I've been showing you with the uh, actual Nimbus configuration tool. So you'll notice it says Nimbus Firefighter. When we toggle the window, there it is. It pops up right there. So the first thing that we are going to want to do is we're going to want to initialize the firefighter. So to do that, we click on the little button here. Now it will take a while. Your sim 
may freeze for a couple of seconds. That is normal. And you'll notice that it switches to active. So the firefighter module is now active. Now to create a fire, we need to go to a place where we would like to create a fire and then basically plop it down. So let's see, we are kind of out in the open here. There's nothing really flammable. So we probably want to be closer to this side. So we'll close this out here put ourselves in the midst of the trees and pretty much what it's going to do is when you tell it to generate a fire it's going to put it pretty much exactly where you are now the easiest way to go around the world and uh you know start fires is to use the free camera which by default is the letter c and that will allow you to basically move yourself wherever you would like and set any number of fires all over the place. So for the purposes of our demonstration today, we're going to click on a little fire there and you'll notice a big pile of ash appears right around my current location. That's our first fire. Now it's not currently active because I have the sim paused. So we're going to find another area like maybe over here. Uh, no, went a little too far. We'll go in between these trees here. Yeah, this is fine. All right. And I got to say, just as a side note, Microsoft Flight Simulator has spoiled me. Every time I see these little flat 2D trees, uh, that's all I can say. That's all I will say about that. All right, back to the firefighting. So I'm going to set us up with four fires here. So we already have the first one placed. We're going to place the second one here. This should keep us busy for a while. And let's see, I need a nice foresty area. How about over, nope, definitely not over here. We'll go over this side. Yeah, this looks bushy enough, so we'll once again pull this out. There we go, Nimbus Firefighter, da da da. We can use the shortcuts to toggle the window. And I would highly recommend that you do that just to save yourself some time. There we go, we've got our third fire, and we'll put one more. Let me just randomly move myself around and see where we end up here. Okay, we are on top of a hill. Mm, you know what, I'm gonna put the last fire right around here under this tree. So this entire area is gonna burn. Smokey is going to be really cross with me, but uh, you know, it's all for the sake of teaching you what to do. So our last fire goes right there. Okay, so now that we have this all set up, when I unpause the sim, these fires will be raging. And the only way to out them is going to be to drop water from the Huey directly onto the fire. And let me tell you folks, it's a lot more challenging than you might think. When we're done with everything, we can reset it all by clicking that button there and it'll deactivate everything and then we can turn it back on and, you know, do some more fire starting. All right, but now that we have placed our fires, let's get back to the Huey and do the good deed for the day to out them. Okay, so just remember folks, we didn't start the fire. It was always burning since the world was turning. That's our story. We're going to stick with it. Okay, so we've got the firefighter module attached to the helicopter, and you're going to notice two things that are a little bit different. There's this item right here, which tells us exactly how much water we have in the little pod below. Uh, it holds a total of about 1,400, I don't remember if it's 1,400 pounds or 1,400 gallons. I want to say it's probably pounds. We're going to go with that. Check the manual if you have any questions, especially when using stuff like this, because you probably want to know all of this stuff. But yeah, that'll tell you that we've got a full tank, pretty much, and as we empty it, the lights will turn itself off. Now, on the left side here, this uh, control unit is also related to it. When we open up the water doors, of course, all the lights are going to go down because it means we're emptying the water and we can turn on the water pump provided of course the orange hose is touching water now what do i mean by touching water whatever x plane considers to be a body of water be it the ocean be it a lake or a river as long as it shows in x plane as actual water and not like a, a terrain texture it'll register and it will actually work with the huey 
to fill up our pumps or to fill up our little tank there. Okay, so hopefully I've explained that to some degree of efficacy. Let's go ahead and take off and we'll see if we can find our fires. Now the other thing to note, weight does play a big role in this operation. Right now, I've got a lot more weight on board because of that 1,400 pounds of water. So it's gonna take a lot more collective action for me to get this bird off the ground. Conversely, as you empty out the little tank at the bottom, you're gonna find that this helicopter is gonna get really light and much easier to fly. Keep that in mind, especially when you are filling the tanks. That's where it's gonna matter the most. All right, now the real question is, where the heck did I put all these fires? I wanna say they were pretty far south here, so. Gain a little bit of altitude. Ah, you know what? I think I see some fire up ahead. So we'll just kind of circle around. We'll take a quick look outside and you can see the holes dangling at the bottom. Okay, so as you can see from the outside view, we've got a nasty forest fire here that may be encroaching on this sleepy little seaside town. So we're gonna wanna take care of that post haze before the residents uh, basically have to evacuate their homes. So we'll swing around here. I just love that blade slap. Okay, so we have four fires here. Now, the easiest way to do this is gonna be to slow down and you probably want to fly uh, with the wind as opposed to against it so that way when you drop your water it'll actually drop where you would like it to so we know that the wind is blowing out of the east so we're going to take that into consideration as we try to get this done and we're going to come down low enough so that the water will spray directly on it so we're going to make a left hand turn here and I'm gonna tell you right now, trying to demonstrate this for you on video and having to go to the outside view is going to get a little bit tricky. So do not be too surprised if I do not do this perfectly, but I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try. All right, so we are nice and slow here. We're gonna pick this uh, first fire all the way to the left here. And we'll quickly go to the outside view and see if we can extinguish it. Okay, so there we can see the remnants of our first fire. We were able to extinguish it. And as you can see, all of our lights have been extinguished as well, which indicates we have empty tanks. Now this helicopter is considerably lighter, but we're gonna take it to the ocean here, or actually the Mediterranean Sea. We're gonna see if we can fill her up, and then we'll work on those other three fires really quick here. So this is the part that takes real skill. Well, aside from, you know, making sure that you can actually dump it on top of the fire, this is where it gets extremely sketchy. So you've got to hover within like 10 feet or so of the water. You've got to hold it there long enough for this fuel or this water pump, excuse me, to actually fill up your tanks. And then as that is happening, this helicopter is getting progressively heavier. So you need to be Johnny on the spot with your collective, your pedals, and your cyclic to keep yourself in the correct spot so that you're not A, falling into the water, or B, 
pulling the holes out of the water and not getting any to use for your firefighting. All right, so I'm going to attempt to demonstrate here and we'll also show the picture in picture just to make sure that I am properly in the water without actually sinking into it. I imagine this would probably be easier if we were using the float module, but that would be too easy. We don't want it too easy. All right, right here is about good. So we'll settle into a hover and we'll open up the water pump. So you're gonna notice that the lights are starting to light up. So we've got a little bit of water in there. We just need to keep still for a little while. It does take a while for this to fill up. And we're already moving here. I'm increasing my collective. I'm having to increase the collective because we're getting progressively heavier here. All right, it says that we are full, so we'll let go of the switch that I have assigned for the water pump. And we'll give it a whole bunch of collective and see if we can make our way back to the fire and dump it out. That's pretty much it. That is how you do firefighting. Now, you can set up, according to the manual, upwards of 300 instances of fire around the X-Plane world. Now, I don't know why you would want to do that, unless, of course, you are a glutton for punishment. Four is challenging enough for me to try and get rid of. So we're going to stick to that. But at least it'll give you a good idea as to how you were able to pull this off. And like I said, Nimbus does have plans of making this a more generic module that will work with a lot of helicopters. So immediately my mind is going towards the X-Trident Chinook and trying to see if I can out a whole bunch of forest fires with that behemoth. But I can only imagine what the weight would be like. Whew. All right, so once again, we're gonna go back to the outside view. I'm coming in a little bit too fast here, so I'm gonna set myself up properly. So we'll swing out a bit to the left. And then we'll come back around the other way. Make sure we're flying into the wind here. We'll bring her down nice and easy. See if we can get this second forest fire out. Okay, so we have two more fires to go. We were successful in our first two endeavors. So once again, we're gonna go back to the water and we will fill her up and bring it back in and see if we can get rid of the other two fires. And actually, this is all just one major excuse for me to check out this little seaside town because this is just so cool. <laughs> I love the architecture here. Really neat stuff. Great job, Orbix, great job. All right, uh, I'm gonna do a pedal turn here. That'll always help us uh, get rid of some of the speed. That blade slap, no. I <laughs> love that blade slap sound. There is nothing more trademark Huey than the sound of the blade slapping the air here. All right, let's bring her down. Watch our VVI. That's vertical velocity indicator, in case you were curious. Once again, we'll pop up the picture in picture so you can confirm with me that I'm actually in the water and sucking it up. A good way that you can tell, just as a little pro tip here, look for the water spray from your rotor downwash. That's usually a pretty good indicator that you're down where you should be. But again, remember, try not to move because if you do move around a lot, this thing will basically act as an anchor and well, that's gonna end really badly. All right, so let's suck up some water. And you can see exactly what I'm talking about here. We're starting to get a little bit heavy. I'm just trying to keep us in the same spot. 
Come on, baby, come on. Fill her up, fill her up. Here we go, three dots. One more dot. There we go. We are full. Whoo! All right. Give it some collective and get the heck out of here. Okay, so where did we leave our fire? Ah, uh, yes. I see the smoke plumes from here. So we'll head over to these people's houses. Not to worry, people. We are here to help. We are professionals. All right. We had a little bit of altitude here. And, yep, I see one of the two fires already, so we'll begin our slowdown. Check our HSI again. We need to be going slightly to the right, so we're going to turn off in this direction as we lower our airspeed. Give it some right pedal. Look at that. These cars are so worried about that fire that they're panicking and going around the roundabout. Such a shame. Such a shame. All right. We're still coming in a little fast, so I am really pulling the nose up here. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. That is what I'm looking for. All right. Now, I don't want to get too close to the fire, but I do want to get low enough that this will be effective. So back to the outside view we go. Okay. Did we get it? Let's turn around and find out. All right, co-pilot, you're the one with the bubble window there, so why don't you tell me if we got it? Yep, looks like we did. Okay, so one fire left, and we will hustle back to the water. See if we can fill her up one more time, and then we'll take care of that. But surprisingly enough to say, this is really fun. Now. I don't know how well something like this is going to work with like multiplayer, but I could foresee situations where if it is possible to use something like this in multiplayer, setting up like firefighting crews in a helicopter in X-Plane and going out in the Huey, basically just outing fires all day long. I'm pretty sure that would be an interesting and fun little endeavor that you and your friends could do probably a heck of a lot more fun talking to somebody in the cockpit who can actually guide you as to where you need to dump this water since my buddy over here really isn't saying much to me all right once again we'll slow down lose some vertical speed and some forward speed while we're at it Oh, I should also point out that mirror down there does kind of work. You can kind of see the world around you through it. But of course, it is explained, so, you know, the mirrors aren't like DCS perfect. But just be advised, if you glance down there and see portions of scenery, that is working as intended. All right, so we'll bring her in. We're three for four. Can we go four for four on this? Hmm, that is the real question. All right, there we go. We've got our spray, so we should be down right about here. Let's open up the water pump and try our luck. Okay, there we go. And slowly but surely, we're lifting up the collective as everything gets a little bit heavier. Now, the Bambi bucket is going to be a similar process, except with the Bambi bucket, you've actually just got one item hanging underneath that you have to dip into the water. So think of it like, you know, going to a well. And I know that's a really, really old analogy, but work with me here. You know, the old school wells that you always hear about in like fairy tales and so on always had a bucket. And the bucket is usually attached to a rope you drop the rope and the bucket into the well and leave it there until it fills up with water and then you pull it up. It's the exact same principle with the Bambi bucket, except you're not actually pulling it up by pulling on the rope. You're lifting the entire helicopter along with the Bambi bucket underneath it. And similar to how we've been outing the fires here, in order to use the Bambi bucket, once we get over the fire, which of course is going to require even more precision, 
that's when you're going to open up the little doors at the bottom of the Bambi bucket and let out your water. Now there's also foam injection that is mentioned in the Nimbus manual that you can also apply to the water. From my understanding, it really does not do much except color the water red. So I'm pretty sure that Nimbus plans on doing something with that, perhaps making it more efficient at fighting fires or something along those lines. I'm not 100% certain what their plans are for that. But just keep in mind, it makes it look like a cool red color, similar to what you might see on the news whenever California goes up in flames every year. Well, California or Florida, I should say. And of course, fire is a very horrible thing, but um, you know, this is mother nature and she is known to do stuff like this. All right. Okay, it says we're empty, so let's check and make sure that we were able to take out the fire pilot I could really use your help here uh, looks like we got it though looks like we got it okay so all four fires have been extinguished the folks in this sleepy seaside town are now safe and our drivers are free to roam around endlessly around the roundabout we are gonna head back to the airport and I guess the last thing that I can probably show you is the hoist so what we'll do is um, we'll head out somewhere and see if we can pull up one of our crew members using the internal hoist as opposed to the external hoist. Why the internal as opposed to the external? Because honestly, I kind of prefer the internal hoist. I think it looks cooler. It's just so well modeled. That's it. That's really the only reason why I prefer it. All right, so once again, we'll go to the outside view as we make our way back to the airport. Okay, so we are back at the airport, so we'll start slowing down here and also losing some altitude. And we'll put her down right on the H, the same as we did before. Now one little oddity that you're going to notice with uh, this hose that's dangling from the bottom, it doesn't recognize the physical ground below it. So when we actually touch down, it's going to go through the ground. I'm not sure if that is something that uh, Nimbus can fix or work on, um, but just be advised, it will look a little bit funny. It's just one of those things that I guess we gotta live with. We can't have everything after all. But now you know how to start fires and stop fires, so there we go. And since we're actually done with that, uh, before we include the hoist and see if we can go rescue some people, I have to remember to turn off the firefighting module. So basically resets everything back to zero. All right, first let me concentrate on my landing here because landing is always sketchy when it comes to me, so. All right, we're pointing in the right direction, so that works for me. We are now in ground effect, so we're not coming down nearly as quickly. Just riding on a cushion of air here. Right, and pull us back just a touch here. Okay, right here is good. Eh, not too shabby. Definitely not a perfect landing, but you know what? It's one of my better landings, so we'll take it. All right, so when we come back for our last segment, I am going to show you how to use the hoist.
Okay, so I'm sitting in the back here because I want to show you a close-up of the internal hoist, which I think is superbly modeled. And you can see the little harness there that we'll be using to pick up and lower our gentleman. And we actually need a guinea pig for this, so here's how we're going to do this. Now, I'm going to be using the magic of editing. Not everything that I show you is currently implemented in this helicopter, but it is something that Nimbus is aware of. And don't be too surprised if in the very near future we get updates to basically improve how this all works. All right, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to open up the weights and balances window, which you can see right here. And we're going to add a little guy on the right hand side. So right next to me here. Howdy, how are you doing? Okay, you are going to be our guinea pig. We're going to put you in that thing. We're going to lower you to the ground. You're going to, you know, do your thing, and then we'll bring you back up and put you in here. All right, so that is the setup for it. Now, the fun thing is where are we going to take our little friend here so that we can drop him off in the world? And I think I have an idea as to where I would like to go here on Menorca. So let's hop back into the pilot seat. And you'll notice I still have the firefighting thing on. I've already stopped it using this icon here. So we'll go ahead and just get rid of the window altogether since we won't need it for the rest of the episode. Make sure everything is set up the way that I would like to have it, which it most certainly is. So we're good to go. And I'm thinking we are gonna fly over to probably where the marina is. So let's go ahead and do that here. Now, we do have an extra guy in here, so we are a little bit heavier. We're not too bad, but just bear in mind the number of people that you have inside this helicopter will affect the weight of the helicopter, so keep that in mind. All right, now, I believe the downtown area of Menorca is over this way. Yeah, it looks like it. You can see all those buildings all over the place. One thing I do want to point out, there are some uh, items that are in the bay that you can land on. This island is one of the very few islands that Orbix did not include extra helipads, and it is kind of unfortunate. Orbix, if you're watching this, I would like some kind of an update to this thing. Maybe include a couple of hospitals with landable helipads as well as you know other various helipads around because even though this is a phenomenal scenery and we can of course land anywhere we want it feels a heck of a lot more realistic if we're actually landing someplace where there's a designated spot for us all right so here we are we are over the marina here and we'll see if we can find a good spot for our little guy here as always, we're going way too fast, so I need to slow us down considerably here. This will give you a good chance to check out the downtown region and the little cruise ship that they've got here. So I'm assuming this water is relatively deep. Yeah, look at that. That is just awesome. Really love the architecture here. So I gotta give Orbix kudos for that as much as I am dragging them for not having helipads. They really did do a pretty decent job on this, making it look like I would expect Menorca to look. Alright, so you see those little wooden marinas right there. You can actually land this thing on those marinas. Granted, I don't recommend it. You can see just how narrow they are. But there are other marinas, or I guess floating docks if you want to call them that, that you can land on and those I would recommend that you check out there's one directly ahead we're gonna head over to I'm still trying to find a good spot to dump off our dude here all right so yes you can see directly ahead there little wooden dock just kind of hanging out there that's what I'm talking about. You can land on that. So it may not be a designated helipad, but it is something that we can use in a helicopter. So that's always cool. All right, you see that little island up ahead that's got that funky building in the center. I'm thinking that's probably a good place for us to drop our guy off. 
Now, I do want to remind you, we have 36, I'm assuming, feet of rope to work with here. We can change that. You'll also notice that there's little plus and minuses on that. So we can actually change the length of that rope. But here's where it's going to get a little bit sketchy on my part, since obviously not everything is coded in the way I think I would like to see it. But we're going to use that to our advantage anyway. So we'll bring ourselves to a hover somewhat around this area. Make sure we've got terra firma underneath and not an actual building. So there we go. Right about here should be fine. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking here should be perfect. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. First, we're going to pause the sim. I know, completely breaks all immersion but what can you do second thing i'm gonna do is i'm actually gonna get rid of our little guy here so we'll go back down to civilian uh1 and this is the kind of stuff that i would like to see automated but the purpose for my showing it to you is to also show nimbus some of the stuff that i think can be done all right so we'll get rid of our little guy so we're going to pretend that he is officially on the hook but in order to make him appear on the hook we need to actually go into this. So we'll go to customize here, weight and balance, and at the very bottom you'll notice it says slung load object. So it's got the person object. There are various objects in the sling load folder in the UH1 folder that you can attach to this thing. Now our guy typically weighs about 170 pounds, so we're gonna set it up close to that amount there. Well, he's he looks a little skinny, so we'll make him 163 pounds. All right, so there we go. We can apply changes. And what should happen is when we unpause a sim, he should appear on the end of our little rope here. Okay, so after we've made our changes, we've got our little guy hanging from the hoist and we are gonna go to the outside view and lower him down. And we'll see if we can get him on the ground. So we have him on the ground now, and at this point in time, we would probably uh, hit cargo release to release him. But again, remember, it is not something that is currently modeled, but something that Nimbus is aware of. So they will be making that more than likely a feature in the very, very near future. So we can pretend that our little dude has done whatever it is that he set out to do down there. And now we're going to need to bring him back up. So. We can just uh, control the hoist, try to keep a decent hover, and it would probably help if I had a bubble window around here, but unfortunately, I do not. It does look like he is coming up, so that's a good sign at least. We can go back to the outside view just to verify that. Okay, certainly does look like we got him. You can see him dangling there, so we can pull him in by just basically bringing the hoist itself in. And what that'll do, if we were to pause again, when we go back to the uh, weight and balances, we will see 
that his weight has been nullified. So we'll go to customize, we'll go to weight and balances, and there it is. It says zero on the sling load weight. So we can now remove the slung load, which effe effectively takes it out of the sim altogether. And we can apply our changes, and just for extra added measure, we'll put him back in the seat. So we'll open up our weight and balance window once more, and we'll set him right there. Okay, so that when we unpause it, we should be able to see our little guy sitting back there. Now, of course, the only catch with that is uh, this door is going to remain open. So, Nimbus, I hope you're watching. This is something that should probably uh, be addressed when the hoist comes in. The door should probably close as well. However, let's see if we can head back to the airport now. So, we'll unpause it. Okay, and look at that. That's a near-perfect hover. I think that's probably one of the best hovers that I have done in this Huey since I started flying this thing. So I'm quite impressed with myself here. All right, so once again, we will pass by the marina. I'm gonna forego landing on the little platform that I showed you earlier because, well, that's just gonna make the video longer, isn't it? And I think I've shown you enough good stuff here for you to get an idea as to what you can do with this Huey. So once again, we'll go back to the outside view as we make our way back to San Luis, and then we can call this episode done. All right, so we are back at the airport and we need to line ourselves up properly. So once again, we'll slow down, we'll trim ourselves up here a little bit so that way we're not flying all over creation. Or oh, one thing that I should mention to you, if you happen to have any cargo, whether it be a man in a little hoist or the basket full of stuff or, you know, stuff like that that's off to one side, Remember, it will affect your center of gravity and you will need to trim to compensate for it. Otherwise, you could put yourself in like a death roll. And that's not pretty, let me just tell you. That is not pretty. I may or may not have experienced that as part of this whole recording process, but you will never see it due to the magic of editing. Yay! <laughs> That's the beauty of being a YouTuber, folks. I can show you the best parts of what I do. All right, but we are now live, so I'm gonna see if I can nail this landing once and for all. Let's see, we're at uh, 47 knots right now, so we'll slow it down, we'll lower some collective. We need to be cognizant of our wind direction. All right, yeah, I think we're doing good here think we are doing good so don't forget this thing also has the medical bay so uh, I'm pretty sure there are plugins and add-ons available that will allow you to play the part of a search and rescue helicopter the only thing I do not know is whether or not this Huey will interact seamlessly with them because I've never used any of those uh, plugins or mods but it is something that could be mentioned to Nimbus to see if uh, perhaps they can check with some of the other plugin creators and maybe we can find like one uniform way of setting all of this stuff up so that us helicopter pilots can have a ton of fun doing all kinds of life-saving flights. 
All right, right about here looks good. So we'll bring her into ground effect. 23 knots, definitely need to slow down a little bit more. Probably should have just hover taxied considering that my helipad is literally on the taxiway, but you know what? I'm not gonna worry about it. You guys know how I fly and it's not perfect. Never claim to be a real world helicopter pilot, just a guy who has a intense joy and passion for doing this in VR. All right, but there we go. So just to remind you, what we've been showing off today has been the Nimbus Simulations UH-1 Huey, the civilian version. Link, of course, will be in the video description down below. All kinds of fun stuff that you can do with this, and I look forward to uh, seeing your videos and your pictures and your stories online, whether on Facebook or YouTube and so on. So feel free to share all that stuff with me because I love seeing what people do with stuff like this. What I've shown you today barely scratches the surface, and it's just designed to give you an idea of what you can do and give you an idea of some of the features that may yet be to come as this thing progresses. And also to remind you the scenery that we've been checking out, we've been on the island of Menorca, which is a part of Orbix's Balearic Islands. The link to that is also in the video description below. The airport is all default, so this is exactly what you would see if you do not have any kind of add-on airport for San Luis. And I hope that you have enjoyed this particular episode. So, that will be about it for me. And I thank you as always for watching. This has been Bell Geode. I have been flying in X-Plane 11. And we will be back at some point in time in the very near future with the original video that I intended to show that explains basically how we got from Mallorca in last video to Menorca in this video. Until then, I hope you all have an excellent evening, and I will talk to you all really soon. Ciao!